Hey, what's going on everybody? So it's a warm day here in January in South Central Wisconsin. And by warm, I mean 45 degrees out right now. So I had two choices. One, I could go out and ride. Or two, I could do a coil relocation, wire tuck and tank lift. I bought everything that I need to do all these several months ago and the weather just hasn't allowed me to work in the garage at all. So I figured I'll tackle this project now and hopefully get it set up and with enough time to go out and ride. If not, the weather's gonna be nice tomorrow and I'll go out and ride. So a disclaimer here. One, I am not a professional mechanic. Everything that I've done on my Harley Iron 883 so far has been self-taught, but I believe what I've done, I've done it with the best research, knowledge, and care that I could muster which I believe is pretty good. But just keep in mind that I am a home mechanic, not a professional. So definitely do your own research before you undertake anything like this. I've done a ton of research and I'm pretty confident that I'll be successful with these mods. But definitely do your own research before undertaking it yourself. Two, there's a ton of videos on YouTube out there doing this exact same thing. Will mine be different? I think so, for a couple different reasons. One, my bike is different than others out there. You see a lot of coil relocations done with the ignition switch. My bike does not have an ignition switch with the key. My bike has the fob. So you need to be within five feet of the bike, turn it on. If I'm not within five feet, toss this away. Toss the key away. It's not gonna start up. And it's asking me right now to go ahead and enter the pin. So this mod, this coil relocation is gonna be very different than other videos out there. Those videos out there are really good. Some of them are not. So my intention here is to, to show you something a little differently with some pretty good video. So I hope I'm pretty successful. Number three, if I'm doing anything wrong that you think should be done differently or better, tell me in the comments below. We're out here to learn how to, to, how to do a lot of this stuff. And the only way we're gonna learn is if, if someone else says, hey, what you did is, is good, but maybe this can be better. Or, hey, what you're doing is really stupid. Don't do it that way. Leave some comments below. Tell me how you've done it differently. I'd love to know. I see some videos out there where riders leave the tank on. I honestly think this is gonna be a lot easier, especially with the wire tuck, if I completely take the tank off. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Let's get to it. So one thing I definitely recommend before setting out to do any mods at all, is to pick up the service manual for your model. Some of you may know the, 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 the blue service manual is made specifically by Harley and I think you can buy those from dealerships themselves for around 80 bucks. Uh, I kind of cheaped out and I went online and I bought a PDF version for 10 or $11. And then I went ahead and printed it out and got a binder to put it in. Uh, either way, it works well, but just make sure that you have this because it has a lot of really great information on steps on how to do stuff, torque settings for, for tightening your screws and bolts, and just a whole trove of really good information. So definitely pick up a service manual. So we're gonna be working with electrical here, obviously. So the first step with anything electrical on your motorcycle should be, be taking that main fuse out. So that's what I'm gonna do now. The main fuse is behind this cover here, but it's, this cover is easier to take off when you take off the seat, so I'm gonna start with that. Let's take off the back screw, whatever you have. I purchased an aftermarket twist screw here. Yours probably has a Phillips head or some type of different head. Easy to take off, just take her off, lift her up, pull it back, easy peasy. So this cover then is easier to take off because you can have better access to these clips. Pull it down, lift her up, set it aside. And your main fuse is right in this guy right here. There's a little clip here and a little clip here and then two sides here that you squeeze. So you just kind of pick up on these clips here, squeeze the sides, and this comes right off. And the main fuse is here, it's the one that says 40A. You pull it out, your bike's not gonna start. I'm gonna angle this bike a little differently actually. Maybe get a little bit better light in here. So there's four points to take off, well, five, but four, four types of different points to take off the fuel tank. There's the bolt back here in the back. There's the bolt in the front here to take off. That's one. Then there's the overflow fuel line, which is right here. There's the fuel line here. 
and then there's the electrical. We'll start with the electrical. And you start here, you see these wires here, you look for it, and you just kind of follow the line down. Follow it down here. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is, is I made sure I rode my bike until I had very little fuel in here. So I probably got a half a gallon in here right now. That's gonna make taking this off a lot easier. Okay, so you follow the electrical down here and you follow it to right here. And you see it's behind this cover here. So I need to take this cover right here off. And to do so, I need a T27 Torx. And on the other side here, you can see there's some hinges. So just pull that out from the hinges. This wire right here, that's the O2 sensor that's connected to the, which one is that? That's the top exhaust right there uh, from my Vance and Heinz big radius. So it's connected right here to this one. So just make sure you kind of pull that out of the way a little bit. And then you take this off and off comes the cover. So you can see now, the electrical, connect, electrical connection is right in there. Hopefully you can see this. Hopefully this is not blurry, but that's the electrical connection right inside there. And like most of this stuff, it's got clips on it that you squeeze so you can pull it out. Now it's really easy here to, to yank on those wires there. Resist the urge to pull on the wires. You're gonna wanna pull this apart where it's connected, not by the wires. So it actually took me a bit to figure out how to get this apart, but I've got it apart. There's a little clip right here that you gotta push in. You can actually do it with one hand. There's a little clip right here that you push in and you pull it out from the other connection, which is over here. So that done, you kinda wanna finagle it around these wires here. Try not snap anything or pull anything else out. Just be careful with wires. These are wires after all. And there's some zip ties here that I'll have to remove. So go ahead and use your favorite tool to remove these zip ties. Mine just happens to be uh, a wire cutter that I use for cables on my bicycle. Works really well. So electrical is removed. So the next, I'm gonna remove the overflow. So safety glasses on, rag in place. And it's on there pretty snug, so it's gonna take a little bit of effort. And there it is, off. This clips on, this clips on here. It's normally clipped on here, right there. It's normally clipped on the right there. Just go ahead and pull it out, kind of set it down in the side. So the next one is the main fuel line here. So what I need to do is I need to push up on the quick release valve here and I need to hold it and at the same time pull down on the fuel supply line there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So. Push up, hold, and pull down. Just a little bit of fuel. You can see in my hand there, not a whole lot. But what happened was the ball valve in here and the ball valve in here, they both closed before too much can leak out. So having that rag there was really helpful actually. So now what I can do to take the tank off is remove the, this back bolt and remove the front bolt here. So now I have to remove this back tank bolt right here. Just in case I do anything to the tank. I'm gonna put a towel right there to protect it.
I'm just gonna leave that sitting there now just to hold it up just in case. So this one may be more of a challenge. My 13 millimeter socket doesn't fit. The screw is sticking out a little further. So I'm gonna use the hex on the other side and the 13 millimeter wrench on this side. And it's gonna be more of a challenge, I think, but let's give it a try. So it's not entirely warm out. About 40 degrees and it's raining outside right now. So I worried about being cold in here. And I got a little space heater, but I worry that I'll blow a fuse with that space heater. But I'm actually pretty warm, I decided to take my jacket off. There she is. On the other side here, just screw this out, hold the tank so nothing falls. There we go. Large bolt, large front bolt, now in there. And the rear bolt, just kind of lift the tank a little bit so it's easier to take out. And there it is. And the moment of truth, the tank coming off. You can hear a little bit of gas in there, not much. Like I said, there's about a half a gallon of tank, but that's how you take the gas tank off. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to part one of the tank lift, wire tuck, and coil relocation. Oh, it's bloody cold in the garage today. As you can see, everything was pretty successful. Stay tuned now next for the wire tuck. So if you're interested at all in seeing any of that, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. So thanks for watching. As always, stay safe out there. Keep your wheels rolling in the right direction. See you later, everybody.